of James. We'll be brief this morning, praise God. It says here, James chapter 1. Start doing like the old church. Let us all stand for the reading of the word. <laughs> Start doing that. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Then when they read, we're reading for like a half hour. <laughs> Once a, it's like, okay, we're going through the whole book here. All right. Well, that's nothing because in Nehemiah, they all read. And when they read, it was half a day of reading and then a half a day of praying. So you talk at devotion. There's no going. They were reading for a half a day. I've been in that. Oh, I'll be in the synagogue. They'll be reading in Hebrew for three hours. I'll be like, I think it felt like three hours because I was a little kid. I was like, man, I don't even know what they're saying. I'm just sitting there standing the whole time. Like, let's eat some apples and honey. I want to get going. <laughs> when you're a kid, everything seems longer. The time and all that. Well, praise God. But here it says in the book of James, it says, verse chapter 1, I'm all, I'm all read starting at verse 2. It says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers or various temptations or trials. And he says, Knowing this, that the shrine of your faith worketh patience and works endurance. Amen. Knowing it says, but let patience, endurance have her perfect work, meaning working in you, maturity, amen, perfection. It says that you may be perfect or complete or mature and entire, whining or lacking nothing, amen. And if any of you do lack, he's saying if any of you lack wisdom, just let him, what does he say? Let him ask of God. Amen. Simple. Just ask God. If you lack in wisdom, you need wisdom in the area, just ask him. He'll give it. He said that giveth all men liberally. He upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in how? Faith. Trust in God that he'll give it to you. Nothing wavering. Like, ah, maybe he will, maybe he won't. No, when you ask, just believe he'll give it to you. Amen. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And he said, For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And in other words, unstable God wants us to be st stable thinking. Amen. Where we're not all over the place but double mind is well maybe he will maybe he won't you're in between two decisions make it one decision i'm gonna stick with god that's what he's saying you know and you know because it affects all your ways unstableness and so it is we'll keep going it says let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted but let the rich, in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is soon, no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. And neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this afternoon. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for teaching us, enlightening us, instructing us, Father God, and helping us, Father. 
We thank you this morning, Lord, as we receive your engrafted word with meekness, whereby it's able to renew, restore, save, heal our souls, our mind, our will, emotions, our intellect, Father God. And we thank you and bless you, Father. And let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. So he says here in verse 12 of James 1, he said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now that word temptation means a putting of proof. It almost it means kind of like the experiment of good or experience of evil or solicitation or discipline or provocation by adversity. So this is someone tried, he's being tempted by adversity. And we know who the adversary is, which is the devil. Amen. It's not God, it's the devil. And it tells us the devil in the first Peter chapter five. It says this here, excuse me if I go here in 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, verse 8, be sober and vigilant because you're who? Adversary. The devil as a roaring lion. He always makes things sound so crazy and fearful and bigger than what they are walketh about seeking whom he may devour but he says this he said but resist whom resists steadfast in what the faith so he said resist them steadfast don't delay on it do it fast just resist them knowing that what the same afflictions hardships Trials are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So they're all, people are going through some things. Amen? <clears throat> and so he says here, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. In James chapter 1, verse 12, it says, For when he is tried. That word means, tried means when he is approved. Amen? He's accepted acceptable he shall receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to them that love him amen it says when he's tried now it tells us we're to endure temptation because everyone's going to go through some sort of temptation but he's telling us when temptation comes it says in verse 13 it says let no man say when he is tempted when he is this word tempted here is different in the Greek it means scrutinized it means to actually be enticed when you're being enticed by something or it means to be as far as when you're tested in as far as a wrong way it says don't say there when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God to be scrutinized, <clears throat> to be enticed. Why? For God cannot be tempted with evil, and neither does he tempt or scrutinize any man with evil. He's not doing that. You got to remember who God is. He's a good God. Amen. And that's why we as ones got to discern what's good, which is of God, and what's evil, which is of the devil. Amen? So that's how we have to do it, because God's not tempting people in that way. Amen? God will allow people to go through things. Amen? But he's not going to have you go through in, as far as tempting you with evil so you can... Go upon your own loss to do something wrong. That's why it says when someone prays, it says they have not because they ask not in James 4. Look at this real quick. <laughs> it says, verse 3, you ask and receive not because what you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Now, God's not going to give you something 
amen, for you to do it wrongfully, amen. Now, he may allow things for you to go through, just like, like this. One person put it this way. I heard it the other day. I thought it was kind of funny. He said, uh, uh, the elderly lady, she was about 80 or something, told her husband, I never got a ticket ever for driving. Never got a ticket before. It was good. Amen. And then, and then the gentleman was because she never had a license. So, uh, how, how, how do you know? That's why you never got a ticket, because you never had a license. So, I mean, the same way in Christ, you go through things, but you learn, you grow, amen? You go, you're not going to get a ticket because you never drove. That's a good record, but you didn't do anything <laughs> to get even, you never even tried. Amen? So, so I'm just saying, what's it called? When you come in Christ, you do start going forward. Amen? But you go through things in life. Amen? <laughs> you don't know what you can accomplish unless you walk through it. Amen? You don't know, praise God, what you actually are capable or what you're equipped with unless you're put in a position to be there to do it. Amen? Obviously, someone could say they never got anything because they never even tried. You know? You don't know what you can actually endure or what you can accomplish unless you're put in that position. Amen? Even if it's a work position, you don't know what you can accomplish. Yeah, it may seem hard at times, but what happens, you grow. Amen. Because if you're always complacent in the same place, doing the same thing, you're never uh, growing. You're never moving forward. Amen. They always say if you always did the same thing, expecting different results, they call it what? <laughs> Insanity. That's a world thing. But if you always do the same thing, expecting something different, how, how do you expect it to change? Amen? So he tells us this. He says this here. In, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, it says this. I'll go there. Okay. It says 2 Timothy, verse... 14, 14. It says, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. It's never gaining anything, you know, but to the subverting of hearers to actually so you can convert them. But if it's person just keep wanting to do their own thing, it's no profit. Don't cast your pearls before a swine. Or give that which is holy to dogs, you know. But he says this. Study to show yourself approved. That's what we just read about here. It says that when we're reading James, he told us that this, <clears throat> excuse me. It says, blesses the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried when he's approved so it says study to show yourself approved to who God that you can endure whatever you go through in life amen and if you put it in the amplified the classic watch what it says here this one I always like it, this one makes a little more sense it says study and be e eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen? Because everyone's going to go through some type of trial in life. I don't care if you're saved or not saved. You're going through something. If you're not doing anything, you'll still go through some on your own because you got the flesh to deal with. 
Amen. I don't care. We were driving down the road. I was looking at this guy's car. I'm like, my Lord. I saw the guy with the car. It couldn't even see through the back window. It was all full of, I don't know, it was full up with everything. And then when we drove by him, the whole side of the car was filled. And he was the only one looking happy. But I'm like, man. I don't know what's going on in that head of yours, but man, this isn't a good thing. Because, boy, you know, that, that's where they call like hoarders and all that. They fill their car and keep filling, and they, they, they're complacent in the way it is, and they don't change it. And you could give them a new car, and they could keep doing the thing, same thing because it's not the car, it's the mentality of a person. So that's why we need to renew our minds, but we got to study so we can stand approved whether by any test we go through. We go through tests, but we want to stand approved when we go through it. Amen? That we don't give in or cater to the things of the old way or our flesh. Amen? Because God's not the one enticing us with that. There, he wants to show that we can overcome whatever obstacle comes in our way. Amen? So here in James, he says this in verse 14, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and he's enticed. See, God doesn't entice no one. A person's drawn away enticed by their own flesh that's on them. So what do you have to learn? You have to learn how to overcome the flesh how to not cater or give in to it. Amen? Because the flesh would want to do one thing, but God has you to do another thing. So he wants you to draw close to him, and he said he'll draw close to you. Amen? Because you, you can be drawn away, but it's by the flesh that wants to draw you away. Obviously, the devil can entice you, but he wants to draw you away not to God, away from God, to the things of the flesh. Amen? So look at what it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Can we put in the ESV translation? I want to put it here. <clears throat> Paul wrote to them of Corinthians because they were like, they, from Corinth, they were, came out of a way of living, which today it almost seems like where we're in. See, he left Israel and went to a country he'd never been in before. And Corinth, they had idolatry going on. They didn't know God. They were serving idolatry, idols, all kind of stuff. If you read the historical thing, they, they, Corinth was pretty, uh, pretty wild. Like, or I hope America ain't going to the way Corinth. They were being delivered out of that because he was going there to bring churches. But they were into idolatry. They had a lot of fornication going on, a lot of stuff that happened in that country because they didn't know the Lord. They had a lot of homosexuality that was happening on, that was there as well and serving a lot of idols. But if Paul said this to them, he said, be followers of me or imitators of me. Not just after me as a person, but as I am of Christ. Amen. He emphasizes not you following me per se. You're following me as I am of Christ because I'm following the Lord. And so he says this. Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I deliver them to you. And he says this, but I want you to understand, are we in a, oh wow, I'm way over somewhere, hold on. I wanted to go to 1 Corinthians 10, my mistake. But he's saying, be imitators of me as I am, as I am of Christ, amen? And so he's saying, you, I want you to follow me on what I'm doing of Christ. So he said right here in chapter 10, I want to go here to verse 1. He said, moreover, brethren, I would, he said, I would not you to be 
unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud. They all were covered. Every person that came up out of Egypt, they were all had a covering over them and all passed through the sea. And he said, and all were baptized. It says in the Moses, because Moses was the one leading them out and God called them just like we're all baptized in the Christ and in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. So they all had partake of the same food. No one was exempt from the same food that they all had. And they all drunk or drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. So they all came out the same way, amen? They all went through the sea the same way. No one went through it different. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's one way through them, and they all went through. With Moses, there was only one way out of Egypt. They were there 430 years or 400 years. They weren't getting out. Till God raised up someone to bring them out. So God raised up Jesus to bring us out because that's one way to go out. And they followed Moses to get out of there. And who was delivering them out of there? God was. Amen. With a mighty hand, signs and wonders. But when they got out, it says they all ate the same and they all drank the same. Amen. But there was others we see that were enticed, not by God. It was by the way of Egypt, by their old way of thinking. So he says this, verse 5, Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. That's why he tells us to study, to show ourselves approved, to be pleased and acceptable to God. Amen. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. I mean, they didn't even get to the promised land yet. They were just in the wilderness, which was an 11-day journey. Turned out to be 40 years. Because of 40 days that they went to go get the food, they went to go search out the land in Numbers. You look at it, Numbers 12 and 11, 12. You go through that. They went to the land of Canaan. They were supposed to come back, tell them what it was, what's going on there and everything, because God said to go in and possess the land. So Moses sent out 12. That's why when we read later, when Joshua sent out the spies, he sent out two. He was like, forget that. I'm not sending out 12. I already seen what happened when I sent out 12. I'm going to just go with two. And then, uh, what, two came back with a good report. They brought confirmation of the, the grapes they had. It was so big that two of them, a couple of guys carrying this grape, man, now you could carry one by yourself. Eat the whole thing. This, everyone, and I eat just the whole thing. These had to be, for these to be that big, it had to be giants there because they have to eat that big. Yeah, so they're not eating little food like we're eating. These guys must have had cows, too, that were big. They had steaks that were like, man, take up the whole. But I'm just saying it was big. There was giants in the land. So they, instead of them looking at the land, what God's given them, they looked at the circumstance to be overcome. They were looking how big their problem would be or their or. As far as they weren't looking at the possession where God said, hey, I've given you this. They're looking at the, the thing where it looks bigger than them, where they like, how are we going to overcome this? But see, God didn't have them go in there to look at any problem. He wanted them to look at the promise. Amen? When you get your eyes on the promise, it takes your eyes off the problem. And what they and the promise you can go in to possess it, you can take it. Amen. God's given us all kind of promises. We just gotta receive them. Amen. And obtain them. But you don't have to look at the problem. You know the problem is what caused them to get discouraged, and discourage everyone else from obtaining the promise that God had. 
two came out, and it was Caleb and Joshua that had a different spirit in them because they weren't paying attention to the problem. They were looking at the promise of what God had. Amen? That's where they weren't enticed. They weren't being, like, fearful and everything of what was going on. They were like, we can obtain it. We can overcome it. Amen? God said we have it. God don't change. He's same yesterday, today, and forever. He tells us in his word he's given us promises, and we can definitely obtain them. Doesn't matter how big the problem looks, his promise is bigger than the problem. Amen? Sickness can look like a problem. Debt can look like a problem. Amen? Uh, the, the things of the world, the situations that are going on can look like a problem. But God said, by your stripes you are healed. Amen? He also said that I'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The thing is, we got to get into his promise and proclaim his promise rather than the problem. Amen? We got to make his word bigger than our circumstance. Because when you can hear that, God, you got this, sometimes you need to be encouraged. I'm telling you, that's why they got a coach on a football team, baseball team, hockey team. Why would they need a coach? It's really to encourage them. Amen. And then you got cheerleaders that cheer them on even if they're losing. But they're there to try to keep them stirred up and get going. And hey, you can win. You know, we're on your side. Well, we got a cloud of witnesses that are compassed around about us that's saying, you got this. We have the Holy Spirit in us that is a comforter, an encourager, a strengthener, telling you got it. Keep moving forward. Keep standing on his promise. Keep holding fast to his word. Amen? Because he, God, will not fail. Praise God. So he says right here, it says in verse 6, it says, now these things were our examples, or these things took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. So that's what he's saying. It's that we don't want to do what they did. They were examples, everything in the old. One thing, God, don't, God didn't leave out nothing in the Bible. In the Old Testament, he, he showed it. He showed how people are. He didn't leave nothing out. He, he showed their attitudes, their everything, their discouragements. He showed it. But thank God in the New Testament, he covered it. <laughs> That's what he did. But he shows, hey, people all go through all kind of things, but God still uses them. So he said that we might then desire evil as they did. Now watch this. He said, be not idolaters as some of them were. As it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. This is why they were in the wilderness. They were supposed to be getting their eyes on the promise to make it to the other side, but their eyes were like, we're, we're here, let's just have a party. <laughs> and he said, we're in the wilderness, we're out of Egypt, let's party, but they partied the wrong way. <laughs> they were partying for the Lord, they were partying for their flesh. So it says we must not indulge. And what was it that time of Bel Peror? And he got them all entangled. You know, it tells us being not entangled in the world. But he said, hey, I can't curse them. Let me send some people up in there. And then what? We'll, we'll have them be with them. And that way we can get them entangled. And he says, uh, and it was actually the prince's daughter and all that that went there and be wild them or betwixt them, you know, bewitch them. I'm going to say that, like trick them. And it says we should not, must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in one day. That's a lot, man. And we not, must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. So what were that? They, they, they were grumbling complaining ah why am i here in this wilderness 
Why is he now? You know, we could have been back in Egypt eating. If you had it so good in Egypt, why you, why did you even want to come out? It wasn't that great. <laughs> you were slaves. And the enemy had no mercy on you. The more you wanted to get out, the more work he put on you to slave more. Forget giving you uh, mud and all that. You go get your own stuff. Even the workers were like, the officers like, man, you you going to cause these people to be like, man, giving them too much work. So they said some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for what? Our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. And he says this. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed that he fall, that at least he fall. No temptation has overtaken you. Look at this. That is not common to man. That's all mankind. That's what he just told us even in the uh, book of James or actually 1 Peter 5. He said, but what's God? God's faithful. He won't let you to be tempted beyond your ability. He's not going to let you encounter something. God's there to help you. He's not going to allow you to go through something and not be there to help you. Amen. He, he won't allow you to be in a situation that he won't intervene and help you in whatever you're going through. Look, look at this. He says, he, God is faithful and not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability, but will with the temptation make what? Also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure. In other words, have patience. You'll be able to endure it. Amen. He doesn't put you in that situation like in Daniel when they asked them to bow down to all the idols. And Meshach, Shemrach, and Abednego said, we're not. Now, did God throw them in the fire? No, he didn't. But was God with them in the fire? He was. And did he make a way of escape? He did. Amen? Now, in the world, you might go through things because of what you believe and what you stand on. But when you do it, God is able to help you get through it. Amen? He's a, if God be for you, who can be against you? God's not the one putting you in no fire. He didn't throw Daniel down in the lion's den. It was the ones that were scrutinizing, the ones that were planning to try to catch Daniel in the act of praying. They knew what he was doing, but he didn't stop praying because they told him to. Amen? That's the world. The world's coming against people of God. Don't think they're not going to, things are changing a whole lot. And they're, they're trying to make things where it's harder for Christians to do what they're supposed to do as a believer. But know what? That's where you endure. He that endureth to the end, the same what shall be saved. Amen? So that's why he tells us to watch and pray in Mark chapter 14, he tells us to watch and pray that we what? Enter not. We give over to. We just give up and say we'll go into temptation. We'll go up and just do like they did. Ah, oh, we'll forget it. You know, we'll just do what everyone else is doing. Nah, -uh. God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you to endure. He wants you to be approved and stand fast through the test of time or the test of trials that go on in your life. Watch what Jesus did right here. <clears throat> Look at this. In, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, it says this in verse 7, and we'll close in a minute. He said, who in the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with what? Strong crying and tears. Who was he crying to? People? <laughs> no. It says unto God. 
that was able to rescue save him from death and he and was heard see God will hear you amen when you come unto him David said I cried unto the Lord and he heard amen David did praise God and he heard in that he what feared he reverenced and watch what it says this though he were a son were because he's king of kings now in the flesh he was a son amen he was God manifested in the flesh yet learned he obedience by what the things which he suffered well, I used to read that and be like man learned obedience by the things he suffered so what how you learn obedience by the things you suffer well the only way you do is if you suffer in the flesh you obey God rather than the flesh so you put the flesh under you and that causes it to be suffered amen just so because you asked I'm gonna show you if we go here to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 Look at this, it says, chapter 2, verse 14, I'm sorry. It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, that's people, he also himself likewise took part of the same, Jesus did. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them, who's that? Us. Who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's the flesh. And he says here, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, a spirit being, but he took him on him the seed of Abraham, flesh. Amen? And it says this, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be or it moved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God he said merciful and faithful God's Jesus is merciful to us he's faithful to us to make reconciliation for the sins of the people now watch this right here for in that he himself had suffered being what? Tempted, scrutinized, enticed. That's what the Pharisees did to Jesus when they came to him. They tempted him to try to catch him wrongfully. But what? He is able also to aid, secure them that are tempted also. He said that are tempted as well so he suffered being tempted what was he suffering in the flesh so your flesh is the one that goes through suffering because it wants to do what it wants to do but the spirit man as it says here in mark if you go there 14 i want you to see something mark 14 <clears throat> verse 38 it says watch you and pray lest you enter temptation for the spirit is truly ready the whole the spirit of God the spirit within you is always willing he's always ready but the flesh is weak see that's how you know am I weak in the flesh when hardship comes trials come or am I strong in the spirit amen that's why it tells us here in Proverbs 24 it says this watch this or look at this verse 10 it says if you faint in the day of adversity what is strong s small your strength where does your strength come from? It comes from God. Amen? That's why he tells us watch and pray. Watch what's going on around you 
and pray. Pray through it. Amen? Pray that you'll endure. Not give in to it, but pray through it. Praise God. But that you don't faint when adversity comes. You get built up in the Word. The Word will give you strength in your life so you can walk. Amen? So you can resist the devil when he comes and that you can also obtain promises and endure whatever you go through in life amen because God's faithful he'll be with you whatever you go through if you stand up for the right thing God will be there right with you because he's faithful he's also merciful and he won't allow you to be tempted more than you're able because he will make the way of escape look at here Watch this in Second Peter, and we'll close in a minute. Anyone getting anything out of this? I'm just sharing something here. Second Peter, look at this. Verse 7. It says, or verse 6, we'll read this. And so, and we've said it before. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6. It said, and turning the cities of Simon and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with a overthrow we are not supposed to be overthrown amen we're supposed to overthrow things overcome praise god making them an example unto those that are after should live ungodly you know that's like not right you know that he was talking about and delivered just lot that's pretty sad he delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation that's their lifestyle that's their talk their walk you could look on the internet go to the phone and it's not far from you you could see the filthy conversation of the wicked <laughs> it's all over TikTok. it's all over all over whatever there is i don't know there's all kind of stuff to tick tock messenger or facebook whatever and all that but it's the filthy conversation of the wicked and he says for that righteous man dwelling among him and seeing that he hear seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deed thank god abraham interceded for lot because they were he was just coming to destroy the whole place and abraham interceded for him did God put Lot in Simon and Gomorrah? No. Lot said, I choose this. This looks like a goodly land. It went his way. He didn't even ask the Lord or nothing. But the Lord promised Abraham what he was going to give him. He said, I'll give you all this from the east to west, all this where you're dwelling. This is yours. But Lot's like, man, this place looks good. That looked like nothing where he was at. But God could take the nothing and make it into something. He did it in the beginning. And he could do it again. Amen. He could take something that looks like what no one wants and make it the best thing that everyone wants. And they still want it today. They want Israel. They ain't going to have it because it belongs to God. I don't care the people cry, kick, scream, whatever. The UN, all of them. They need to go talk to God about it because it belongs to the Lord. And what God has promised, he's not altering what he said. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not fail. One idle tilt of what he spoken. And he said from day to day. So Lot went there on his own. And thank God he had an interceding uncle. Amen. That's why some people are still around because they had people to intercede for them. Family members, uncles, aunties, grandmothers, mothers, dads. Amen. Spouses. Praise God. <laughs> Children. Could be anyone. Teachers, amen. And it says right here, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. See, he'll re he will deliver you out of whatever temptation, trial, hardship that you're going through. You just got to hold fast to him. Amen. And you obtain the promise. Praise God. I'll leave it with this last verse. Chapter. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 22. 
we'll close with this. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from what? A evil conscience, doing wrong, and our bodies washed with pure water, but let what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Listen, God gave the children of Israel the land of Canaan. God held up to his promise. The children of Israel might not have, but he, Caleb and Joshua, they were able to get it. Amen? Because God held up to what he said. Did they have to endure things? Yeah. you going to endure things whether you saved or not. I don't care what. When, when you weren't saved, you endured a whole lot, and you didn't even know what to do. You took matters in your own hand, and it seemed to got worse. <laughs> but when you got God with you and you go through something, amen, or you endure something, God's grace is sufficient. He's merciful. His mercies are new every morning, and he's faithful, amen, to his promise. He doesn't waver on it. He's not about maybe I'll do it for you or maybe I won't. No, he said all his promises are yes and amen, and he'll see to it that you'll be able to go through it and that you'll be able to obtain the promise that he's already promised you. Amen? We just have to hold fast. Praise God. Let, let us close. Amen? Father God, we thank you for your word this morning, and we bless you and honor you, Father God. We thank you that you are so faithful to everything that you promised, Father God. Lord, if we somehow any time missed a mark, we, we may have fell, you're able to get us up, Lord. You said, who are we to judge another man, whether he stands or falls? Because, Lord, you're able to uphold them with your right hand, your power, to keep them up. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning, this afternoon, Father, that you're the helper you're encouraging us to make it through, hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, this day in Jesus' mighty name. Now, some of you that might have missed it, you might have said, hey, slipped up, listen, God's not here to condemn you. He's here to love you. Amen. God's, his gifts and calling is without repentance. I don't care where you messed up or how long it's been or how long it's been out. Know what? God's so good because I've had it happen. I, I left for a minute. And when I, what's crazy about it is the mailbox that I had. This is amazing. I'm just encouraging while we're praying. Praise God. I'm just sharing something. I left the state. I came back a year later. I closed the mailbox up, everything. I was like, done. Came back. I went back to the mailbox, to the, where the lady's at at the post office. She was still there. This is a year later. I said, you know what? I want to open a mailbox here. And the lady told me, you know what? This, is, this has got to be God. She said, man. He said, the person that had your mailbox just closed their mailbox, and I got the key for the same mailbox you got. I said, Lord, you are so faithful. You are so good. He, he didn't fail me. He kept the same one for the time I arrived. I didn't know that. It was just on I me. Mean, let me go open the mailbox, and the guy, whoever had the same one I had, close it that day that means God was still there he was waiting he didn't give up he's faithful to all that he promises I was like thank you Jesus he said these signs shall follow them that believe Amen. and there God will put signs in your path to know he's with you he ain't giving up on you he loves you so we'll pray Hallelujah. If you, you know, amen, we want to pray with you, pray for you. God's so faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> God loves you. Those who are watching with us, maybe you messed up. Maybe you, 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 it's been a while, but God's there for you. He's never given up. 
he's waiting. He just waits, and he puts everything right back in order again. So we want to pray with you, for you. If that's you, you can lift your hands. You can tell us, hallelujah, online, and we want to go ahead and pray with you. Father, we thank you right now. You are so faithful. Those who are watching, saying, that's me, oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your grace abounding toward them right now, moving in their life, Father. Lord, I thank you for putting the path straight right before them, loving on them just like you loved on your prodigal son when he came home. Hallelujah. You had everything waiting right there for him when he came home. I thank you, Father. And that nothing changed. Everything was freely there for him. Hallelujah. You clothed them, put a ring on them. You said, you're not my servant, you're my child. Thank you, hallelujah, for calling those home, Father. Lord, for them changing. If you don't know the Lord today, hallelujah. Well, all it is is one step away. You just say, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe you died for me. You rose again for me. So I can be free. Thank you for forgiving me today, Lord. Making me a new son, a new child in your kingdom new daughter of your kingdom thank you for saving me now changing my life in jesus mighty name hallelujah <clears throat> if you prayed any of those prayers we would love to hear from you we want to be able to share some material with you let you know how you can walk further in the things of god we want you to know you're loved you're blessed you're an overcomer you're victorious in Jesus, my name, and the best is yet to come in your life. God loves you. We love you. And amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And he will not be stopping being Lord. He's Lord for eternity. Amen. Have a blessed week. We'll talk to you and see you uh, this week. Amen. God bless.